Hey folks, John Wilson here from SOAR with our final webinar of the year. And when I was thinking about creating this webinar, my focus was, hey, you know what? New Year's resolutions are coming up. And, uh, and the thing about resolutions is that they are made to be broken. And so I discovered this year some interesting ideas about sustaining a resolution. And, and, and in doing that, I turned it from something that I was trying to do to making it a quest. So as always, if you want more information about any of the webinars that we have, uh, you can reach it, you can look at us at soarnc.org backslash webinars. Uh, SOAR is a high adventure summer camp, uh, academic residential boarding school and gap year program serving kids specifically diagnosed with learning and attention challenges. And we have a host of webinars and, <clears throat> and program opportunities available for you. So <clears throat> I'm going to get started and uh, let's, let's begin our quest, shall we? So the strategies I'm going to talk about today are designing the quest, you know, uh, examining what your keys to success might be, uh, how, to, how to salt the hay to, to be motivated. Uh, I'm going to talk about an empowerment model for perseverance. Uh, we'll spend some time talking about support systems that might help make sure that your quest stays on track, uh, being proactive, and then we'll end with, you know, developing a BHAG or a big, hairy, audacious goal. So when we're talking about designing the quest, uh, you want to make sure that you, in, especially for, now, the things I'm going to talk about today can apply to you, but they can also apply to your entire family. And so if you're designing a quest for the family, make sure that the entire family is involved in the design of that process. You know, so what are your areas of focus? Now, as with any kind of quest, you can either, oh, pardon me, you can either add something, you can stop doing something, you can learn something, or you can improve something. <clears throat> And the, the, real, the real design behind creating a quest that has a chance of actually being something spectacular for you and your family is you have to really own it and you've got to want it. Because the truth is, if you don't own it or want it, or there are saboteurs who aren't invested, then, then it's not going to happen. And so how do we break down that to uh, smaller quests? Now, uh, a couple of years ago, um, where this, this idea uh, stemmed from was, uh, some of you may know that one of the things I love to do on my off time is I, is I whitewater canoe uh, rivers. And, um, and I was inspired to try and uh, run 25 different sections of river in, uh, in, a, in a calendar year. Now, <clears throat> typically, in any calendar year, I run maybe five to seven. And so it was, it was a it was a big, hairy, audacious goal. It was a BHAG for sure. But in order to make that work, I had to develop uh, a new set of skills so I could run harder rivers. And uh, and so each river was a was a small, smaller portion of that quest as I was moving forward and, and, and continuing to press forward. And as I got closer, I just I continued to get more and more mo motivated. And so I think that when you take that concept and you apply it to your family, you know, what, what is it that the family might want to try and accomplish this year that they can work together uh, as a fluid team about? So as you determine what those goals are, you also want to look at what the potential barriers are, you know, time constraints, uh, knowledge, you know, how motivated are we really to do this thing? Are there environmental factors like you know, if, if uh, for instance, in, in, my, in my goal, the creeks had to be running, which meant there had to be rain, uh, but are there environmental factors that might prevent you from achieving those goals? What's the attitude? What, what are your ability? And how many levels of support do you actually have that you can or can increase? I think it's critical also to create opportunities to check in and revise the quest as needed. Because once, once you've sort of set this path in motion and you're on this roadmap, you want to be able to uh, make adjustments and little side quests that, uh, that, that might uh, interest you. There are, and, and if this concept um, 
needs any kind of additional clarity for you, think about video games and the quest that individuals can can go on as they're trying to achieve, you know, uh, a bigger goal of, of saving uh, saving the princess or whatever it is that the the goal might be in the video game. And these little quests keep folks engaged. And, and that's really what we're trying to do is we're trying to keep us engaged in a way that, um, you know, that is uh, thoughtful and purposeful. Um, there's an idea this 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 uh, develop this problem solving matrix E plus R equals O. Does anybody know what that means? E plus R equals O. I'll give you just a second in the chat bar to see if you do in fact know what E plus R equals O is. All right. I don't have any brave takers. So I will tell you, events plus the way you respond to them determine what the outcome is going to be. Now you necessarily can't control the events. Oh, eating plus rest equals optimal. Aaron, I love it. That's a good one. Um, you can't necessarily control the events, right? Because you know the, the things are going to happen. What you can control is how you respond to them. And so making sure that you are in a uh, in a headspace to respond appropriately is going to significantly affect the outcome. So uh, let's see here. So events plus respond equal outcome. How about smart objectives? Lots of folks, I hear the word smart and, and they are, they absolutely smart objectives have to be in place in order for you to really know measurably whether you've met something. And those are, they have to be specific. They have to be measurable. They have to be attainable, they have to be realistic, and they have to have a time frame that you're going to meet them by. So as you're designing this quest, make sure that you are looking at what the barriers are going to be, you're thinking about how you might respond to different, uh, different situations, and then make sure that the, each of those little quests, those side quests, have smart objectives. All right, so here are some keys to success. The most important question is, do we really want to do this? And, 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 and a quest might be, you know, we want to make it to school on time. Um, let's see, what, there's what, 152 days in the school year? I, I don't remember anymore, but we want to make it to school on time, you know, 147. Do you really, are you really invested? Are you setting up a goal that really is going to work? We want to, as a family, go on five campouts this year. We want to have three big family trips this year. Do you really want to accomplish that? Are you really invested? How determined are you? And if you're not determined, you know there's going to be failure. Can you break up this big, hairy, audacious goal into smaller, attainable bits? If it's not fun, especially your kids are going to you know, wane. Visualize success. Think about what it might look like if you meet this, this, this goal. And then be willing to fail forward. You know, often one of the things that really upsets resolutions or some of these goals is that you, you make a mistake, you falter, you stumble, and then it just seems like I just, I'm just going to give up. Uh, but if you're willing to fail forward and start fresh and just sort of pick up where you left off, you're going to have much more success. One of the one of the concepts behind that in video games is um, is you know the save your save your journey or um, or you reach a, 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 a checkpoint and you create these checkpoints where you can fall back to and say, okay, you know what, we made it to this checkpoint. Here was the next goal, let's reset. And again, I think it's really critical that you have backup plans. I'm on one of these quests right now as we speak. <clears throat> My brother and I chose to make the Dallas, uh, the, or the, the Cowboys uh, football season, uh, a our get healthy goal uh, season. And so every week we, uh, we have a different challenge. And at the end of this, a workshop, I'll tell you a little bit more about our big, hairy, audacious goal. All right, how do we stay motivated? 
you know, there's that saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. So what can you do? And a wonderful uh, friend of mine years ago said, well, you can make them thirsty by salting the hay. So what's going to keep us motivated? Kids that are motivated by power and control, they, they want a stake in the game. They want to know who's in charge. The cost of cost. What if I stumble? Uh, part, of, part of our quest, uh, my, my brothers and I quest, is that we have a different weekly objective. And if you fail the objective, you have to pay $10 to the other if they made the objective. I was absolutely astonished the links I would go to to not lose $10. So when you think about staying on track, the cost of cost is incredible. I know there are some weight loss or, or some gyms out there that if you sign up for a class, it's, it's free, but if you miss the class, you owe a $5 fee. And sometimes not wanting to pay that $5 is just enough to get you out of bed and get you into that gym. Some, some kids or, or some of us are motivated by prestige. And so, you know, social media, public validation. I, I remember with my, with my canoe quest, I was putting it out on social media every time I hit a new river, you know, checking it, getting a little bit closer, uh, thanking the people that were part of that journey with me. Um, rewards. I mean, honestly, uh, I, you know, at the end of this, 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 this goal, this, this, this uh, competition with my brother, uh, my goal is that he's going to end up owing me money, and I'm I'm looking forward to having him pay up. Uh, but you can have you know prizes. Sometimes money can be a real motivator. Items uh, or a special event that if you make this thing, then you're going to get a chance to go to this other thing that is just really exciting. And then I've also found in in my quest that urgency is like our um, our spinach, our superfood. And here's what I'm talking about. My daughter really struggles to keep her room clean, but she wants to have a friend over. And I say, well, you know, your friend can only come over if you get your room clean. I've taken advantage of that moment and she will get her room just spotless in order to have that, that, that friend come over. Uh, hey, can we go to the movies tonight at seven? And then I'll say, sure, but I need this and this and this done in order for us to do that. So taking advantage of those opportunities can help you really continue nurturing that quest and creating feelings of urgency can be incredibly motivating. I wanna talk about this empowerment model that we designed a couple of years ago. When you involve your child in the process of setting goals, <clears throat> Uh, guidelines, choosing goals, determining limits, and establishing consequences, a couple th really interesting things happen. The first is that when you create choices for kids, you create empowerment. And when they have choices and empowerment, then they're always more invested in what's happening. And when you are invested, you're willing to kind of dig in a little bit. I also think that having good, healthy support systems is critical to, um, to the idea of, of meeting these objectives. One of the things that, that, one of the reasons that people's resolutions almost always will fail is that they don't have an accountability buddy. So an accountability buddy in this big, hairy, audacious goal that I'm using with my brother is, is my brother. We, we are holding each other accountable on a weekly basis. But it could be somebody that you're just checking in with and letting them know how you're doing on that goal. It could be the entire family in a group meeting. But when you've got other people that you're answering to, sometimes that is just the thing it needs in order for you to continue the quest. Avoid bad influences. Uh, create islands of competence with like-minded community. If, if, uh, if, if your goal is for the, the family I mean, I'm just throwing out just random goals, but one goal is that the family is going to play more together and we're going to learn a new game. And there's a, a fun, um, uh, you know, tennis or, or we're going to learn to play racquetball or we're going to play Frisbee golf. You know, get with other people who are enjoying that activity and, and, and create a sense of community because, again, community helps nurture and drive quests. If you need to, you can develop mentors or even hire coaches to help. 
uh, help all of you learn or grow, or maybe just a couple of you to that, that need their skills in hands. Engage your friends and family with updates and keep them invested and motivated. Because if you do so, one of the things that you'll find is that, uh, is that people will cheer you on. And, and that feels really good. And I think it's really important to be willing to design and modify support structures as needed. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right. So when you are combining the accountability putty, mentors and coaches, a community of like-minded individuals, friends and family, you're really creating a great deal of support for this quest that can be quite powerful and keep you on track when otherwise resolutions or goals that you've had just sort of fall by the wayside. The more folks you involve and the more check-ins you create, the more powerful and, and, um, and potent this quest will become. Let's talk about being proactive and staying on the journey. Um, there's a word called responsibility. Now, E plus R equals O. And so that R is response ability. Your ability to respond versus react. And when you are making choices about what you want to accomplish, and rather than react to failure or react to a crisis or react to a barrier, and you think to yourself, what is it I really want here? And then you respond accordingly, then you're really practicing response ability. Develop a systematic approach for checking in. I've talked about that a little bit, especially if it's with your accountability buddy. The other major, major piece to, um, uh, to, to, to having any kind of success on in any kind of objective or quest of any kind is to be the best you. And the three things that allow you to be the best you are sleep, diet, and activity. If you don't get enough sleep, you're a lousy you. If you don't eat correctly or you don't eat on time, you become, that's right, Betty White. Those of you that have seen that Snickers commercial uh, know what I'm talking about. You become hangry. Uh, if you are inactive, then you feel sluggish and, you, and, and you're not motivated. So if, if, you, if you make sure that you're taking care of sleep and having a good sleep hygiene, if you're having a, a, a diet and eating at regular intervals and that you're staying engaged, that is the best way for you to be the best you. I think it's also important to develop stop signs and de-escalation strategies. If you're creating a quest for your child and they start to become frustrated, you, you have to know when to encourage them and when to sort of back off. You have to know how to de-escalate instead of just push, 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 push. It's also important for you to know that for yourself, right? Because this quest might be yours and just yours. And so what are the things that are going to help you de-escalate when you start to become frustrated? <clears throat> There's a, a theory that if we are at just the right amount of frustration and, and, and stress, and it's not overwhelming, that we, we can kind of have, be in that peak performance place. But if, but if we crest that place and it becomes to overwhelm us, then there's tremendous degradation as to what we can try and achieve and accomplish until we come back to an, a, a regulated emotional place. Here are a few tips and tricks. If appropriate, Role play important components of the quest in advance. Create guidelines and structures for the next steps. Provide an opportunity for anyone in the family, if it's a family quest, to call a family meeting. And if there are issues that they want to discuss, I think it's critical to keep it fun. I've mentioned that a few times. If it's not fun, folks are going to kind of just drift away from it. Utilize technology, communicate through emails or text if that works for you. And I think it's also critical to understand the importance of validating each other. Your kids thrive on validation. And if you think about it, sometimes you do as well. And so creating those opportunities to make sure that you're receiving that can be really, really important. So what's your BHAG going to be? What's your big, hairy, uh, audacious goal going to be? As I mentioned, uh, the, the, the actual goal that my brother and I are exhibiting 
is we have a weekly challenge. And the weekly challenge is how do you do something that is going to improve your health? Is it uh, is it not, um, is it, is it diet? Is it exercise? Is it sleep? Uh, well, we have found, uh, and then, and then, uh, there's $10 to the winner each week. And if you both win, then that $10 gets pushed to the next week. And so now, you know, as if you're both successful, those weeks start to become more and more and more important. And then the, the big hairy audacious goal at the end is to see which one of us has lost the most percentage of weight. Think of, so as I, as I talk about that for a second, how much better is that than saying, I wanna lose 35 pounds? It is so much more specific. We've tried as our weekly goals, intermittent fasting. We've tried making sure that we're consuming the right amount of water, uh, sustained exercise, no snacking after seven, keeping our caloric intake at, at, at a certain level based on our uh, our body mass in index, and it has been wildly successful. Uh, and so I encourage you to set up a big, hairy, audacious goal for yourself, and I encourage you to set one up for your family. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, I'm uh, happy to stick around for a few minutes and answer them, but I can't wait to hear about the quest you establish and the journey that you go on, because only you and your family can be the components of change and growth as you embark on this wonderful quest. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, well, hearing none, I am going to thank you so much. This was a shorter webinar. I'm, I'm actually going to another uh, site to do a webinar with another group right now. Uh, it's, um, uh, it's the ADHD Summit, and it's actually a, a, a paid platform. It's like attending a conference with some really amazing uh, speakers. And so I hope that, uh, that, that you continue to surf the internet and find great content I, I thank you for joining us and we uh, look forward to seeing you uh, next year. We have a whole new series of webinars starting in the spring and look for information about those. I think that you're going to really enjoy them and like them a lot. So again, this is Big John wishing you a happy, uh, Merry Christmas, a happy new year, happy Hanukkah, and go set those uh, big, hairy, audacious goals. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.